Hi and welcome to Cosmic Hamsters where today we will be building the IKEA compliment cage. Full disclosure before you start watching this video, I've never made anything like this before so I went wrong a few times but it still all worked out in the end. In this video you will learn how to build the main part of the cage, the lid including attaching it to the cage and the platform I made with wheels attached which my cage actually sits on. Just to let you know how the cage is set up, it's just as a play run, so watch to the end to find out why this is. So grab yourself a drink, put your feet up and watch me try to build a cage. Okay, so first off, to make the IKEA compliment cage, you will need two of the 75 by 58 centimetre compliment shelves, two of the 100 by 58 centimetre shelves, and one of the 100 by 58 centimetre glass panel which has a white edging all the way around. So besides the actual IKEA complement shelves and glass panel, a few other things I have bought are these 3.5 times 40 millimetre screws and um, these 3.5 times 60 millimetre screws. So we'll see how many I use by the end because I can't remember how many. But, oops. And I've actually bought some, hopefully this is going to be thick enough, 1.8 millimetres um, melamine edging stuff that you iron on so it looks smoother at the front. You'll see what I mean when I get there. I also got some dowels to fill some holes in but I didn't realise they existed on the back of the glass panel. Okay, so to give you a rough idea of what we're trying to make here, so you want one of the large panels on the bottom and one at the back, and then the two smaller panels go on the side, and then the best thing is to make sure that you've got the white top bit, the white side bits facing upwards on the top, and have these stupid IKEA stamp things. So I've just made sure that mine are at the bottom at the back, and again, somewhere... Where is it? Oh, can't find it. Where is it? I can see it. There we go. At the bottom there, rather than showing on the inside of the cage. I just thought it would look nicer. So, um, what we're aiming to do is these sides are just a little bit too long, so we need to measure the thickness of this back piece, the width of this bottom piece and then the thickness of the glass panel front piece and that should give our, us our measurement for how wide this piece needs to be so we just need to trim a bit off so I know roughly it's 61 centimeters approximately but it will probably be a few millimeters shorter of that if you want to make a tighter precise fit so I'm just marking it out on the side panel. So you need to mark it off on both side panels and then saw them. My brother is going to saw them for me. <laughs> Yay! And but my friend has done it with a hand saw, um, as you can see here. I did not have, well, I'm too ill to do that and I would not have the confidence to do a straight line so I'm relying on my brother with his uh, chop saw. One house move later and I'm picking the cage build back up. I also got the two sawn side panels back off my brother. So here we go. I didn't realise on the inside of the glass panel is that it has these holes on either end so what I've got is some little dowels, I'm just going to put them in the hole and saw the end off and hopefully that is not a place for Moonbeam or any other hamster to chew. <laughs> so, just got my little hacksaw. Oh dear, it's a bit sticky up here. Let's see if I can get a bit more off. And then I do have some sandpaper so I can just sand that off.
Five more to go! I found just two dowels. Two dowels did all six holes, so one dowel, one dowel for each side, because by the time you like use one bit for each one, you just, yeah, right. And just to do a neat job of it all, I'm just using a bit of sandpaper. Got some hamster safe paint, tempera paint. I decided to just go over the dowels with a bit of paint. Just because I'm being a perfectionist, you won't even see this. <laughs> Got 100 by 58 for the base and 158 for the back. And now all I'm going to do along this bottom here is so make sure the hole, ooh, make sure the holes are at the back and then they won't be seen rather than on the inside. So you've got smooth inside. And I'm just going to mark along the bottom here where I'm going to put the screws. So I need to leave five centimeters or at least five centimeters from this end to about here. So when you add the side panels on and screw in, you're not going to hit a screw. So that's what I'm going to do, just mark where I'm going to put them. So this panel is about 1.8. So I'm going to put the screw about 0.9 up from the bottom, 0.9 centimeters. This end, I've got a six centimetre gap and then I've got a mark to put the screws every ten centimetres long till I get to the end and that one's about six centimetres from the end. Ten, ten holes to, to drill and then screw. Don't laugh, I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> so I thought before I actually um, drill and screw my big pieces of wood, I'm just practising on here. So, um, I was very wonky to start with, <laughs> now I'm just taking these out and uh, but I've got a lot straighter, so I think I know what I'm doing, building my confidence up. <laughs> my own, <laughs> I'm balancing it against my chest of drawers and I've sort of taped the ends together, so now what I've got to do is drill all the holes along here, this is the back and that's the bottom of the base, so we shall see what happens. <laughs> this might be a disaster. Drill a hole. Eee, I'm too scared. Normally I would have drilled all the holes but I'm trying to get some stability in it. So I'm going to screw one here and screw one there hopefully. And uh, so it's got some stability in it before it all collapses on me. Whew, let's see. That tape seemed to work, so um, yeah, just gotta flip it the other way, do two at that end. That one went a bit wonky, all the others went straight, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one. <laughs> oh my god. Um, this one was the one that was going in wonky, and I just don't risk it because it's going in an angle. An angle. So um, I didn't want it splitting the wood on the other side, inside the cage, so I just stopped and I just drilled another one above it. So you're not going to see that anyway because it's on the back. So and there's already holes on the back anyway for uh, pre-drill. So yay, that's stage one done. Back and front. Let's call it a night. Hey, day two. Hello, another day. Um, putting the sides on. So again, because I'm on my own, I've just used a bit of tape to try and hold it in place. And um, yeah, you can see that. So on this side, um, I've actually got three holes already because that's just what it comes with from IKEA. So then I'm probably going to put um, maybe a couple there and one there. So I'm just going to do that now. So yeah, so the reason why we started these screws along the bottom five six centimeters in and not here is because now we're going to screw the side on like this and that's not going to touch that screw there so that's what i'm doing i'm just going to drill my holes actually just to make it a bit stable because i'm working on my own 
I'm actually going to put the screws in as I go along side and now I'm just going to drill and screw all along here and I'm probably going to do them about 10 centimeters apart. I don't know why this is sticking up a little bit so I'm just going to try and do it as square as I can but I've put, I've taped this in, taped the, <laughs> oh you can see, taped the front panel in just to try because I want to make the front bit as straight as possible so if that's as square on as possible then I'll just have to put up with that little bit there <laughs> I measured that wrong from the edge so it started to come out there um, there but it's on the outside so it doesn't matter I'll probably just sand it off or something um, but yeah second side on Right, so this is really important now. So for all of the cage builds so far, we have been using oops, the 60mm length ones. Right, now we have to swap over to the 40mm so it doesn't smash into the glass panel when we're screwing that on. So make sure you go shorter, shorter screws for the glass panel. Also, I don't know if it's all wet, but I think this is what people do, is like, that's the length of the screw. So I've put my tape on where I don't want to screw, because I've been screwing right up to there for the long ones. So, just so I don't make my holes too big. Don't know if that's a thing or not, I have no idea. I'm sure I've seen people do this, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Front panel has just slotted into place, and smooth and I've just put the tape, it pretty much holds itself in there to be honest but I've put the tape on so I've got something holding in place while I drill and screw the holes on the side. So here we go, final stage. So I probably don't need this many, I probably put way too many screws in but I've just, where the glass panel's going, along here, I've just, just ignore the tape that's holding it in place. Um, I've just, where the screws were on this side, I've just marked, oh, too far, I've just marked level on this side and uh, I've just got to go and drill and screw them in. And I've done that on both sides, so this side and over on that side. Because we had to saw the end off, we've got a rough edge on both sides of the class panel. So what I've got is, this was a 1.8 millimeter melamine strip and which is the exact width of here. Okay, got my new iron, my old iron didn't work, I haven't used it in like 10 years. <laughs> so. Wish me luck guys. I have read you can put greaseproof paper or a towel in between the iron and the melamine but then I wouldn't be able to see where I was going so I decided to not do that. Really, just need to make sure that the glue is bonding, and you're just meant to slice it off. <laughs> I just feel this is going to go wrong. Let's see. Slow and steady. Oh dear. Oh, it's actually wonky though. Anyway, so and you won't see that at the bottom. So let's see if I can get that a bit better. So, yeah, Ooh, one side done, one more to go. So apparently also you can use a little bit of sandpaper, if you've got any sharp edges you can just sand it off as well. Two sides, I've got melamine on. So I think that looks way better. So I decided that I want to put my cage on the platform with wheels on. So I bought four wheels and I'm going to put them on the platform. 
so the screw is sticking out like a little bit I'm using these <laughs> these wooden coasters <laughs> the only pieces of wood that I could find so that on top and put the wheel on the screws should not be too long and again I'm just going to so don't drill too far I'm just going to put a bit of tape on my drill bit there so I don't drill too far so proud of this that is not going anywhere and I haven't drilled through the bottom woohoo three more to go I'll be back when they're done three hours later all four wheels on Whee! and it didn't come through the top on the other side although I almost did Woo! and it's on <laughs> so that's the trolley, or for want of a better word, with the wheels at the bottom. The coat is on top, and the brakes are on, so it's not going anywhere. So now all I've got to do is the lid. Okay, so now we're on the home stretch <laughs> to make the lid. So I've got these two long limbs of wood from B&Q, which are... Plain smooth timber, 18 by 70 by 1,800 millimetres. So the size you, well, this works for this cage, but if you've built a bigger cage, you might need more wood. But anyway, and then I've got my saw, I've got my corner plates, and I've got my mesh, 91 by 61 and 6 millimetres. I go with six millimetres because then that's suitable for any hamster. And I've got a staple gun which will come in handy to attach the mesh to the one frame. So thanks to my mum for the loan of the staple gun. Thanks mum. First off I measured the length of the lid against the cage. Then I marked 45 degree angles on the pieces of wood. To be totally honest here if you followed along with my stories on instagram when i was building this cage you know that this went all wrong i cannot saw 45 degree angles on wood so what happened after me spending a couple of days trying to rectify this so all the wood would interlock i sent it off to my brother and he just cut it with his chop saw simple we should have done that in the first place if you want to make life easier on yourself just cut it at 90 degrees and not 45 I sent this to my brother to be uh, rectified and he rectified it, yay! Because he's got a chop saw that cuts my angles. So yay! Um, so now um, I'm just going to glue it. I haven't got a lot of this left so this is my hamster safe wood glue. So I'm going to use these to glue the corners together before I put the L brackets on. Probably not best to do on your carpet, but this is the only place. And then I'm using my fireplace to push against it. All four corners are now glued, so I'm going to flip it over and put my L corner plates on just to give it some stability. Draw where my screws are going to go. And like after before, I put tape on to mark. I like to just go, just to be on the safe side, <laughs> I like to go just a bit shorter than the length of the screw. So. Here we go. Now, screw on the L bracket on. And you just need to do this for each corner. I have got a staple gun, so I guess for added um, stability, you could try stapling. There we have it, four L corner plates on with some staples for just extra security. And now, yeah, I'm just going to rub all those pencil marks off. <laughs> and next step is to paint it, I think, before I mesh it. Paint it, I'm just giving it a quick sand just to make it that bit smoother. 
so we're all set up ready to paint you could leave it natural if you want I just want to paint my own white because it's white um, the cage does also come in like a wood um, like a brownie wood colour <laughs> the paint I'm going to use is the tempera paint and the reason why is because I've got it and it's hamster safe and then I'm going to protect it with some flat white plastic coat I was planning on just using the plastic coat but when you paint it, the word this is a sample, it's rubbish. So if I show you, that's it with the tempera paint. It's like, if you can see the difference. Um, so I thought one or two coats of the tempera, and then a coat of plastic coat, and then that should protect it. So here we go. Handle that I'm going to put on um, just makes lifting the lid up easier. I've got one on Comet's cage and so I've just sanded it so it was varnished and I'm just going to paint it white so it matches. While my paint is drying I'm going to cut the mesh to size. Lengthwise it's fine, widthwise I just need to trim this bit off so I'm going to do that now. So to do that I've just got my little cutters and just snip along here. I don't like having sharp edges along the edge of the mesh so I've just bent it over. So and now I am going to staple it. So I've got my staple gun. I'm just going to go round and staple. Yay! So that's my lid meshed and now I'm just going to put a handle on it. At the centre of the cage, that's the centre of my handle and I've worked out the distance of these holes and I think I'm going to have it a couple of centimetres in. So I've done all my markings and so that's where the holes are going to go so now I've just got to drill them all the way through for this. Once the holes were drilled I just had to screw the handle into place. Yay got the handle on. Now all I've got to do is to add these hinges on at the back and if I'm feeling brave enough I'm going to put this piston arm on hinges to put on the back and because we've got six centimetre screws going in here I needed to make sure that we were further away than six centimetres but also because I'm attaching it to the top of the cage um, the lid. Um, this is, I think it was eight centimeters. Um, so I need to make sure that I'm at least eight centimeters in, so I can attach it like so. So to be on the safe side, I have marked. Where are we? 10 centimetres in from the sides, so yeah, 10 centimetres in from the sides, and then just got a hinge and I've marked my little circles with a pencil, and I'm going to drill them out and then put the screws in. Screw them in. First one done, now I'll do the same on the other side. So I've got the bottom half of both of the hinges on and now I just need somebody to come and help me hold the lid while I mark where the top half of the hinges need to go. So we're holding the lid in place, we are now going to mark where we need to drill the other holes for the second half of the The pilot holes screwing them in place. Go on, put the lid down. 
If it doesn't work, I'll cry. I'm just going to add my piston arm, which is going to help hold the lid up. So, um, unfortunately, I stuck it on the end and now I can't get it off. So, I've just marked where I need to put the screws in, and that's what I'm going to do. Just worked out where this needs to go and drawn through there. So, now I'm going to drill my pilot holes and put my screws in and hope it works. You're going to have to come to me. Oh. Hang on, not too far. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, Clever girl. I don't know, but I just... Yeah, but that's made that more springy, so I'm going to have to put a catch on that, I... Yeah. To rectify the springy left hand side, I unscrewed the left hinge and the top part of the piston arm and I filled the holes with pieces of wood, re-drilled and re-screwed everything and then it lay flat. So I'm not 100% sure what I did wrong in the first place, but it worked out in the end. Last thing to put on are these hook and eye latches, um, just so added security. The ones I got are just 50mm um, and I think it's about 2 inches or something. Mark, this needs to go, obviously being careful, that shouldn't go through there because it's not wide enough, that should be right, let's just do this, put that up there a sec. Gonna make sure it's not coming out the other side. Just turn it there. Da -da. My hammy is not gonna escape, so now I'm gonna do that on the other side and job done. That is literally <laughs> nothing's gonna escape through that. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe it's actually finished. For those of you that don't know, I was actually building this cage for my female Syrian moonbeam, but unfortunately we had to say goodbye to her at the beginning of July. She got poly as I was building this cage, and therefore when it was finished, I didn't think it was right to set her up in it. I just thought it would be too much stress for her. And so we just used it as a run on her night time for a few minutes, and she seemed to enjoy it, so at least she got that time in it. I also have to thank the IKEA compliment cage for bringing my awesome friend Lindsay Olsen into my life. She also has a build video about this cage on her channel and how I got to know her is I asked if I could use a picture of her cage in one of the videos I did about different types of cages you can get for hamsters and we've been best buddies since. <laughs> As for the cost of this cage, all in all it cost me £130 to build. Providing you already have tools like a drill, a screwdriver, a staple gun and a saw. If you just make the basic cage with a lid, it will cost you about £96. I will leave a list of all the items and the costs in the description below. I do also want to say that this cage is so heavy that you will probably never manage to move it just on your own. You will need two of you or build some sort of platform on wheels like I did. One last important thing to say is that the internal measurements are 96 by 57 centimetres and 55 and a half centimetres high, which equals about 5,472 square centimetres, which is 848 square inches, because I know everybody will be asking about that. If you made it all the way through the video, thank you very much. And can you give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.